Well, other than to say that I didn't expect any of the leaders of either one of the two national parties in California to support me in view of the fact that they are professional Democrats and professional Republicans, but uh, they, don't, they do not speak for the people of California. And at least uh, the leaders in both parties in California are talking about Alabama and my coming to California. So evidently they must be concerned because they have certainly uh, carried on a lot of conversation about our prospects of coming to California. So when we go to California, we will see who's right. Uh, and in my judgment, we're going to do well in California, having received more mail from that state than probably any state in the Union. War. Governor, leading California figures in both political parties have backed away from your third party presidential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, any anti right legislation is good, uh, whether on the national or state. Uh, level and if the federal courts uh, uh, had made it possible to take care of, uh, of uh, anarchists and rioters under the present law we, w we would not need any new legislation but the federal court system of this country has turned the country over to anarchists and that's one of the great uh, resentments among the american people today that you cannot convict anyone for uh, actually advocating the destruction of your nation and the overthrow of the government and the time's going to come when the people of this state and of the nation are going to change that. Well, of course, any law in any state that would prohibit someone from running for the presidents in that state is uh, patently unconstitutional. The fact that they say their law is so ambiguous that you don't know what it means means that it is unconstitutional, and in my judgment, uh, there is no state in the Union that can keep a bona fide candidate for the presidency off the ballot. How important is Oklahoma in your campaign? Oklahoma is important because we are leading uh, in polls taken, I understand, in California, I mean in Oklahoma, and uh, we're going to do well in that state. In fact, we're going to speak there in September, October of this year. Judiciary. So it's good to be here in Tallahassee in Florida and I brought one of my youngest campaign workers with him, my youngest daughter, Lee Wallace, named after Robert E. Lee. So wave at him, lady. In the state of Ohio, 452,000 signatures, which represented with the 50,000 that we took off ourselves because of signing on the wrong line, 18% of the voters in that state sign petitions. And when one person signs a petition in that state, there were three or four who would have signed had they had the opportunity. So we're going to break some of the polling outfits in November because we have this sort of support all over the United States.
I want to defeat them for the sake of changing trends. And anybody that tells you that the Republican Party is good for Alabama or for our philosophy and attitude, wherever we live in the country, all they ought to do is just take the record of the Republican Party and read it from 100 years right until this day. And, <clears throat> and yet, they've caught both national parties have looked down their nose at Alabamians for the last 100 years and called us necks and hillbillies and pea pickers and peckerwoods and all of those things they thought were derogatory, and we are just tired of it. And that has solidified our part of the country. As Governor Marvin Griffin knows, I don't care what the Atlanta paper says, he knows we're going to care the mass of people in Georgia that are going to support us in that state and throughout the entire country. So when the Republicans come here and say, let us beat the National Democrats, you remind them that 10 weeks ago, the greatest assault on the property system in our country was voted by the Congress, a bill that goes into effect after the election, that when you start to sell your home or lease it, you can wind up getting in jail in this federal court about the sale of your own property, and Mr. Nixon called for the passage of the bill, Mr. Humphrey called for the passage of the bill, and uh, Mr. Dirksen, uh, he called for it. If it had been a week later, he'd probably call the other way. But anyway, he called for it himself. Uh, he called for its passage. And Mr. Gerald Ford called for it, along with all the Democrats. And they succumbed to the intimidation and blackmail of a group of anarchists in the streets of our large cities. that you enact legislation to require banks to pay to the state of Alabama a reasonable rate of interest on all state funds held on deposit by such banks over a certain period of time. I am pleased to report that the Alabama Bankers Association has agreed to jointly sponsor with us the appropriate legislation to implement this purpose. I commend the association and its membership. We will recall also that in the last session of Congress, legislation was enacted which provided that daylight saving time would go into effect from the last Sunday in April until the last Sunday in October of each year, unless the separate states choose to exempt themselves from this time change. This question presents many complex problems. You will naturally want to consider the actions taken by adjoining states, as well as the effect of a time change on all aspects of the social and economic life of Alabama, with particular reference to schools, children, farmers, and businessmen. There are sound reasons both in favor and in opposition to the change. 
The importance of the issue suggests the wisdom of public hearings. To afford an opportunity to all who may feel so inclined to present reasons for and against the daylight saving proposal. It will require of you a Solomon-like balancing of interests, and it will not be an easy decision to make. to the important forest products industry in our state because government in Alabama is dedicated a factor of major significance in bringing new industry to Alabama and causing existing industry to expand has been an attitude of encouragement on the part of your state government of Alabama. We want new industry in Alabama. We want new friends and new investors and we shall continue to welcome newcomers to our state. Alabama and her people are making increasingly important contributions to the economic growth of our nation. This is made possible by the human resources available among our people, a hard-working, well-meaning, honest, and fair-dealing people who are ambitious for their own state and who are deeply concerned that this great nation of ours may return to the moral precepts and godly purpose that made it the land of the free and the home of the brave. I am thankful and proud of the people of Union Camp Corporation and other far-seeing industrial and business leaders of our nation who have made it their business to know what Alabama is like and what may be expected of her people. Come back to see us, and thank you for coming. <clears throat> and to make our views known on this to those who represent us in the National Congress, and hope that uh, they'll take a very firm position. This company on this great step forward, is it in the... Uh, It's true that he'll still sit on the court as an associate justice, but it's also true that in this way the Senate of the United States can make known the feelings of the American people on this subject and on this issue. Uh, we've talked about pornography uh, here in our state, and many interested citizens groups now are taking uh, steps to try to alleviate this problem, and we've announced our plans for legislation uh, to try to alleviate the problem. But the pornography that we've talked about and it's come to our attention in Alabama is nothing compared uh, to this film uh, to which the court wrote uh, in the case in question. This expansion program at Kershaw Manufacturing will greatly benefit the economy of the Montgomery area through increased production and a doubling of the current workforce. The first phase of this new expansion program will begin immediately with construction of a new building at the Louisville and Nashville Railroad Industrial Terminal in Montgomery. The first phase is expected to be completed in January of 1969. The remainder of the expansion program will take place over a three-year period resulting in the relocation of Kershaw's entire Montgomery operation at the new site. Well, I said first that it was the policy of our government, and I think the proper policy, the sound policy, to try to pursue a course of negotiation with the Soviet to restrain the deployment of the uh, anti-ballistic missile system because the deployment uh, is costly, number one. Number two, it merely raises the level of, uh, of the arms race. And number three, once at that level, that new level has been approached where your defensive weapons 
temporarily are able to uh, to offset some of the offensive power. What happens is you improve the offensive weapons with new techniques and new designs and uh, new systems uh, to overcome the new level of defensive strength so that you get a rising crescendo of the arms race. That's what I was trying to point out. Uh, it's my view uh, thus far that uh, uh, it's my understanding that the uh, discussions with the Soviets, while still, still underway, have not produced any positive results. Uh, in the meantime, uh, here at Huntsville, in the Redstone Arsenal, and uh, in other parts, and of course in American industry under contract, we have done the research and development work, which is uh, essential for the uh, manufacture of an anti-ballistic missile and its proper deployment. What I was trying to say last evening was that if these negotiations break down, and if as a result of that breakdown, the Department of Defense feels that it's essential to our momentary, temporary security uh, to deploy such a system, we are ready to do so. Governor, what chance do you really think you have of being elected president or even getting the Democratic nomination? I feel quite confident that I will be the next president. The uh, confidence is based on experience that I've had so far this year. I've had a chance to campaign now in 43 states uh, full time since I went out of office in January. So far, I have uh, not been disappointed anywhere. I have a twofold strategy. One is to spend this year getting prepared for their campaigns individually next year. And the second phase, of course, is to do well in the early primary and delegate selection states. The first one of which will start four months from now, approximately in uh, Iowa. But in Iowa, and then the next state is Oklahoma, the next state's Mississippi, the next state's New Hampshire, the next state's Florida. I would guess, I think accurately, that I'll do no worse than first or second in any of those states based on my frequent visits to them. You say that you'll finish no lower than first or second in the initial primaries. That's right. What makes you so confident? Well, I know what uh, has gone on so far. Well, just take, for instance, uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire is the first primary state. It'll be fairly highly publicized. The uh, campaign will culminate there on the second day of March. Last October, November, December, January, February, there was tr quite a bit of uh, campaign effort expended there by uh, Udall, Jackson, Benson, and other candidates. I began to campaign in New Hampshire after I went out of office this, this January. And now uh, I would say that the campaign is boiled down to one between me and Congressman Udall, who's concentrated on New Hampshire and a couple of other states. I don't think that Benson and Jackson, for instance, uh, would even go into New Hampshire to campaign any anymore. Uh, Congressman Udall is telling the national news media representatives in Washington that I'm ahead of him. I think that I'm possibly still a little behind him. Governor, how about some of the issues facing the United States today? And I suppose we'd have to say that the number one issue is the economy. What's your analysis of our economic problems? Well, I think it's good for the American people to remember that our nation inherently is just as strong economically as it was two years ago or 20 years ago. <laughs> got the same basic natural resources, the same capacity for production, the same purchasing power among our consumers, the same potential foreign markets and so forth. We just lost our purpose. There's a lack of confidence in the future. There's no way for us to understand what we hope to accomplish next. There's no way for business, industry, manufacturing, labor, agriculture, science, education, government to work together to uh, tap the tremendous potential in our country. So we need, first of all, I think, to get the bureaucratic confusion in Washington eliminated, to have a president and Congress who can work harmoniously to, with one another, to make sure that we emphasize uh, employment. We need to have uh, an aggressive sale of American products overseas, a termination of the tax, tax incentives that encourage our multinational corporations, our large businesses, to manufacture goods overseas and while we have unemployment here. We also need to understand that we have uh, literally millions of jobs waiting to be filled, jobs that are productive and not just make work type jobs and return to the work ethic. We've got uh, eight or nine million people out of work now who are active and looking for jobs and they have a lot of jobs that are available there like in the uh, design, manufacture, distribution, installation of uh, solar energy units, uh, repair of the railroads, completion of the interstate uh, system, rapid transit systems, uh, daycare centers, uh, care for the mentally retarded, 
or alcohol is alcohol is drug addicts, preventive medicine, or early childhood development, teachers' aids, and collection of garbage, cleaning up trash along the highways. Just millions of jobs are looking for to be filled. But that ought to be the first and pre and you know preeminent emphasis of government is providing our people with useful work. Now, about half of those jobs you mentioned involved government expenditure, government work, government labor. Uh, how are you going to be able to do that? The people are not amenable to further taxation. Well, that's not, I wouldn't think that half of them would be because when you get to, to the area of, uh, of railroad repair or installation of, compu of uh, pollution control uh, devices, uh, solar energy and so forth, those are all private industry. But uh, even if, if you did assume that a lot of them were government kind of jobs, I, I, it, there's a good point to be made. I just had an analysis done by some people at MIT at the School of Economics there. And they uh, figured that, that every unemployed family now cost about $80 per week to pay for their housing, clothing, food, transportation, education, recreation. To employ that head of that family at a full-time job, 40 hours a week, minimum wage, two dollars and a half an hour which cost a hundred dollars a week only twenty dollars difference and the contribution to our economy and the taxes paid and the uh, services delivered would be much greater benefit than the twenty dollars a week difference of course most of the jobs are uh, in private industry that I did describe to you so that would be a very good investment other countries do it like Japan which is a much weaker country than we import 98 percent of their uh, energy uh, they have an unemployment rate of less than one and a half percent, so it can be done. But you're talking about one of your major thrusts would be the further development of American markets abroad. Yes. But American products, except for a few technologically superior devices that we do market successfully now, are largely uh, non-competitive on an economic base with well, foreign products. I don't agree with that statement. They, uh, the price of pro the cost of producing many American products is equal to or below that uh, same product in, say, Japan or Germany. They are some cheap labor markets that would be uh, uh, difficult to compete with. But we have so such a wide diversity of products, including not only manufactured products but also things like food, that we we could profit greatly from the aggressive sale of American products overseas. Our government does not do it. Other governments do. Speaking of the sale of American products, uh, we've been rather aggressive with selling our wheat lately. Uh, what would you propose to do about, uh, in the name of detente, about relations with the Soviet Union on an economic scale? I would be tough with them. I think that Russia ought to be considered a competitive buyer of our wheat, for instance. We've had uh, a circumstance develop in this country that's been very unfortunate under the maladministration of Mr. Butts when we have pitted unnecessarily the consumers on the one hand against the family farmers on the other. In general, What's best for the family farmers is also exactly what's best for the consumers in the long run. Also, there's been some distortion of opinion by Mr. Butts and others. As a matter of fact, every year, we have to export at least two-thirds of the wheat that we produce in this country. We can only eat about one-third of the total wheat we produce. So the other two-thirds is a very good export item. It ought to be sold aggressively. We could produce more and export more. Russia ought to be sold wheat, or other countries ought to be sold wheat, e even only when we have an adequate supply for ourselves. We need to increase our reserves, which are down below 30 days now, up to at least, uh, I'd say, two months supply. Keep half of that supply under the control of farmers. But uh, after we meet our own needs, we ought to sell our wheat at top prices to countries that can compete for it. Uh, if we have a shortage on the world market, then I would certainly let our own friends and allies get first crack at the wheat before Russia does. They're growing at the rate of between six and seven hundred students a year. In addition to new faculty who are on hand, new positions that have been created, we're looking forward during the school year to the occupancy of new facilities. The Auburn Memorial Coliseum, the Paul S. Haley Center, two major building projects will be completed and occupied during the year. Our big job during this coming year is to present, along with all of the other education forces of Alabama, the needs of this institution for the next 10 years. 
We have been engaged during the last year in making 10-year projections. We foresee, for example, an enrollment of 21,000 students at Auburn by 1978. We will have, in addition to the 400,000 young people of college age in Alabama in the next 10 years, an increase of over 100,000 more. We need to make plans now for the development of opportunity for all of these young people as a wise investment in the future.